former PM Datuk Sri Najib Razak had pressured ex-1MDB CEO Muhammad Hazim Abdul Rahman to get KPMG to sign off on its audit of the fund's 2013 financial statements despite the irregularities it found. This was after the audit firm discovered that Najib was aware of 1MDB's bogus investments in Brazen Sky, an entity incorporated in the British Virgin Islands by Low Tech Joe. Mohamed Hazim told the KL High Court today, however, that the audit firm refused to conclude the audit. This was because they were not satisfied with the documents and answers given pertaining to the investments in Brazen Sky. Due to Najib's insistence, Mohamed Hazim said he had no choice but to suggest that the board replace KPMG with Deloitte. Earlier, Mohamed Hazim testified that there was a meeting at Najib's residence in Langat Duta in November 2013 among 1MDB top officials and Jolo to discuss KPMG's audit of the company. During this meeting, Hazim said Jolo advised Najib not to talk too much with KPMG during the upcoming meeting, though he must emphasise that he was aware of 1MDB's investments, especially the one through Brazen Sky, and that he was comfortable with all the documents available. It was previously established in court that the investments in Brazen Sky were worthless and the company was only a vehicle for Jolo to embezzle 1MDB funds. KPMG signed off on 1MDB's accounts for 2010, 2011 and 2012, while Deloitte was appointed to do the same in 2013 and 2014. However, in July 2016, Deloitte said the statements it audited for 1MDB should no longer be relied upon after the US DOJ filed civil forfeiture suits against 1MDB. Vaccine or no, Hartaliga believes demand for rubber gloves will continue to exceed supply and that there will be an enormous shortage of the product even in the next three years. Executive Chairman Kwan Kam Hon says glove usage has surged and that the industry is currently unable to meet the additional demand of 120 billion. He explains that glove dipping is a long process and the expansion transition period is at least three years. Currently, Hartalega's annual production capacity stands at 38 billion pieces of gloves. That's set to increase to nearly 44 billion pieces by FY22. CGS CIMB Securities said in a note last Friday that the acute global shortage of gloves is likely to worsen as COVID-19 cases worldwide show no signs of slowing down. It believes that glove demand is unlikely to taper off even with a vaccine as glove use will in fact increase when the masses rush to be vaccinated. Harta Lega's shares jumped by 8.5% today to 14 ringgit and 10 sen. Star Media Group will be embarking on a retrenchment exercise to cut its headcount after its mutual separation scheme failed to yield the expected headcount reduction. In an internal notice cited by the edgemarkets.com, Chief Financial Officer Sam Au said the exercise will commence in the fourth quarter of this year and should be completed within the same quarter. Au explained that with its business significantly reduced, Star Media has to look at the necessity of operating with the same number of employees throughout all its business segments. He also noted that the reorganisation of business operations and the way work is performed would also lead to redundancies. These redundancies will be decided based on need to cease functions and scope of work as well as a reduction in workload in business units due to contractions in business. Executives, managers and those in higher positions will receive a severance benefit of half of their last drawn salary for each year of employment or three months' salary, whichever is higher. For non-executives or unionised employees, the payment terms will be as per the terms set out in the collective agreements. The Asian
Asian Development Bank is maintaining its GDP forecast of 6.5% for Malaysia next year, though it trimmed its 2020 growth target from negative 5% from negative 4% previously. In its September update, it said the economy will continue to be dragged down by the adverse effects of the pandemic on consumption, exports and investment. Meanwhile, measures to contain the spread of the virus by restricting travel and business activity will still weigh on household spending. However, with restrictions relaxed from mid-June, some recovery is expected in the second half of 2020 and the release of pent-up demand is already showing in wholesale and retail trade, which picked up strongly in June. Malaysia's GDP contracted by 8.3% year-on-year in the first half of 2020 and Putrajaya has announced stimulus packages worth 295 billion ringgit to prop up the economy. Going forward, ADB said ensuring a path back to sustainable fiscal balances will be key to Malaysia's medium-term economic prospects. Muted price pressures will enable Bank Negara to continue to pursue accommodative monetary policy throughout 2020 and 2021 and so strengthen consumer and business confidence and support growth. The MACC is reportedly looking at possible charges against certain individuals in connection with the Mara property scandal in Melbourne. According to news reports, the agency's chief commissioner Azambaki said local investigations are complete. However, there is a hiccup as his side is now waiting on the Australian Federal Police to complete their probe and hand over the evidence. The controversial deal involves Mara's purchase of the Dudley International House apartment block in 2013. In July, Australian police charged developer Dennis Teen for allegedly bribing a Malaysian official in order to secure the sale of the student dormitory. This comes five years after Australian media outlets, The Age and Sydney Morning Herald revealed that the price of the property had been inflated by 4.75 million Australian dollars or 14.4 million ringgit to provide kickbacks to a group of Malaysian officials. <laughs>